Here's some very good and effective ways at understanding a customer. You sit on top of the profile, and you know whether you're looking at a lifetime value, or you're looking at lead scoring, you're looking at look-alike modeling. At, 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 at Giorgio Armani is a good story. I mean, I, lots of good stories. So um, there's about 51% of all buyers of Giorgio Armani clothing are men, 49% are women. You may not have thought that, but that is the truth. And um, the question that was posed at the time, it was a few years ago, was can we, do we understand our customers well enough so that we could create what's called a look-alike model, which is understanding the profile of the customer, the buyer behavior, and then take that profile and find more customers like it. That's why it's called a look-alike model, okay? So we built the models. I mean, we built the algorithms and the, the, you know, we really knew the customer very well, very, very well, and, um, and we built the model. And what we did is we started to look at, so it was very, at that time, it wasn't the right segmentation, but it's what they did. Uh, top 20%, next 20% sales, third, fourth, and fifth. So they had five segments. You take out the Rockefellers in that family, that's the top 1% because they buy every Giorgio Armani clothing from the day it's made. And we then took the next kind of 19% out of that 20, right, the top thing. And we, and we clustered and looked and carefully, and, and we noticed that there were characteristics in the next 20%, the second tier, that were incredibly similar to the first tier, but we had never approached them in the same way we approached the first tier. So you know what we did. We started to approach the second tier the same way we approached the first tier, and we started to get a lift of the second tier moving into the first tier. Everybody understand what we're doing here? That's called a lookalike modeling, and it works, and it's very interesting. So I am, as a, I'm a, as a sailor, I always like these kind of uh, expression. Everybody gets so much information all day long, they lose their common sense. Remember I said it's not the information, and in the, not this last, this year's um, Bermuda um, America's Cup, but the one in San Francisco, you remember, or Team Oracle was down eight to one, they lost one more, they'd lose the whole World Cup. And the skipper was a Australian, very clever and good sailor, and, and, and Oracle told them they, they used fin technology, right? Fin came out of the water, a certain degree, and, they, and you went very fast. And Oracle's computer said you have to run at this particular wind angle, which means the way the boat is headed. And the skipper was saying, you know, uh, the Kiwis aren't, it's not the way they're going. It's not right. And no, no, you know, it's the computer, the technology, it, it knows what it's doing. You just follow along. Lost number one, lost number six, lost number eight. We got one more, we're out. Couldn't sleep that night. He wrote the story, it's a very well-known story in the sailing world. And he said, I don't, give a, I don't give a darn what the computers say. I know when I looked outside the boat, I didn't see my fin rising, and I saw his fin rising. I'm not taking 38 degrees, I'm taking 42. And he won eight consecutive races and took the World Cup. So we can get overwhelmed with data. There's all kinds of machine learning and artificial intelligence, all kinds of stuff that's helping us. But the bottom line is you got to do data analytics. You got to put your stake in the ground. There's lots of good things, but make sure you take your head outside the boat every once in a while. Make sure you're, you're making sense.